1981, Marine Private First Class Robert R. Garwood was convicted by a military court of communicating with and aiding the enemy and of assault of a fellow American prisoner of war in Vietnam. Tonight's film is a dramatization of Garwood's Vietnam experiences, told from his point of view. Okay, Bobby, whenever you're ready. Take your time. No hurry. Whatever comes to mind. PFC Robert R. Garwood, 2069669 USMC. I was just a driver, you know. Ten days left in country, I was going home to be married. Marble Mountain is? I'm looking for First Force Recon. Man, there's nothing but recon all over this place. I gotta pick up a Louie and take him in. Well, I'll just continue on down this road, man. Hope he finds you. After dusk, man, we give this place to Charlie.
Jai, mai to mar, mai to mar. Afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you. You've been marching for ten days now. It's time for you to have a little rest. You say it's a bit too young, Kitty. My name is Mr. Ho An. I'm a professor of English here. <coughs> you hungry? Yes. So we don't have any bread here. We have no meat. The jungle used to be full of animals, but uh, because of the bombs, the only thing we have to eat now are rice and dry fish. What's your name? TFC Robert R. Garwood, 206-9669, USMC. What's your unit? What was your mission? Our intelligence is very, very good. So good I know all the answers of everything I ask you. So it's no use for me stubborn. If you are progressive, you'll be treated leniently. Why did you go to officer training school? I did. You are the invader here, Bobby. You understand? Our nation is the oppressed. We're not at war against the U.S. people. We're fighting the U.S. aggressor. Just like you'd be fighting a buckler breaking into your home. Consequently, the Geneva Convention does not apply here. You're not a prisoner of war. You are a criminal of war. You understand the difference? No. You will. How old are you? You're 19. You see, you know all the answers. Why are you here in our country? I'm a Marine. I follow orders. Where are you from? Indiana, is it right? You see, we know the truth. You can deny it. We even know what your job was over here. We got proof. Your uniform was clean, and you were carrying an officer's pistol. I was just a driver. And you carry this. It was issued to G2. That's intelligence, yes? It's my trip ticket. It just allows me to check out the vehicle. And you're an officer with the West Intelligence. Is that right, Bobby? Sign this, and you'll be fat, clothed and your malaria will be treated. Other American prisoners have signed similar statements. You won't be the first. 
Don't let her be a hero, Bobby. You're not. You already told me so much more than just name, rang, and serial number. Sign it, and your family will know you are alive. Americans. If you had gotten outside the perimeter, you could have been killed. There's no way myself or the guard could have stopped it. I'm disappointing you, Bobby. I thought you'd learned your lesson. What does it take to convince you that that escape is impossible? These two men have committed crimes against their own people. We we'll give them this opportunity to confess. I'm I don't want to see this. There are no bullets in the weapon. It's just a test for their sincerity. We have the power of life and death over you, Bobby. You cannot escape. If you're progressive, you live to go home to your family. It's your decision.
Wes. 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 American? Yeah. Are you? Indiana? California. Captain Bill Eisenbron, MACB advisor. They took my glasses when I was kept here. I'm blind as a bat without them. How long ago was that? About five months ago. I got caught with two sergeants in Kwong Nai. But they killed both of them after a while and just kept me. They think I'm an intelligence officer. That's why you're still alive. Listen, Bob. We're not the only POWs here. What's happening to us is happening to lots of other Americans. And nobody's coming in here to get us out either. It's up to us to stay alive. Come on, right? Doi bao, an tu tim nai, ham, nin tim kat, chai tong doa. Yeah, I speak the language fairly well. <laughs> Look at me like that. If you want to beat them, the only way to do it is get to know them better than they know themselves. And no matter what they do to you, don't let them know what's going on inside your head. No matter how hard they hit you, don't ever let them know how much it hurts. And when you can't take it any longer, just give in long enough for them to stop what they're doing. Then regroup and continue to resist. That's an order, Private Garwood. Do you hear me? I am ordering you to survive. Sing it out. Talk. Tobacco. Talk. Now. Talk. Same word, exact same spelling, but with a different intonation and has a totally different meaning. Talk. Medicine. Talk. Medicine. Look. Look. Country. Country. Look. Water. Look. Water. Look. Country. Look. Country. Bob eats rice. Bob. Bob Very well. Bob wants to eat meat. Bob Bob Very well. Lift your knee. Look at this. Kantum. Kantum. Caterpillar. Ike wants to eat caterpillar. Bob needs to eat caterpillar too. It won't hurt you. Birds eat them. to catch snakes, you know, black snakes, car snakes, and I'd bring them into third grade to show. One day I'm on my way to school, and I pass by this creek, I see this big long snake in the water. So I went out and grabbed it behind its head, and so it wrapped itself around my arm, and I decided to take it to school. <laughs> this teacher, when she saw it, she freaked. I mean, they emptied the whole damn school. They had the police arrive, fire truck arrived. All anybody told me was just don't let go.
Finally, this one policeman grabbed the snake's head and unwound from my arm, dropped into his bag. It was a water moccasin. <laughs> Man, things poisonous as hell. Oh, yeah. All my life, I've been getting into trouble like that just because I won't let go. It's like my mother. She left when I was four. She, um... I only had one memory of her. One time, she took me to see Santa Claus. It was raised mostly by my father and my grandmother. We were poor. We didn't have nothing. I mean, neighbors would give us food and clothes and stuff. One kid pointed at me in school once, I remember, and he said, hey, that used to be my shirt. That whole time, I just, you know, always thinking about my mother. Where is she now? What's she doing? And a couple years ago, I found her again. When she took me to the airport on my way over here, she said, uh, she said, I feel like I'm not going to see you again, Bobby. I'm not going to believe this. What is it? Come here. American. Marine uniform, boots too. Very good for you. You have friends. their ways, Russ. Learn their customs. Bob's pretty fluent in the language now, so we can both start working with you tomorrow. Look, you two know well enough. You know since all three of us learn it, right? No, no, that won't work, Russ. Listen to me. They're gonna try to turn us against each other whenever they can. But if you know what they're saying, you got a leg up on them, see? around here long enough for them to turn me against anybody. Huh? What? Don't try it, Russ. I've tried it, so was Ike. It's 100 to 1 against you. You get out of here, they'll find you. They'll make you wish you were dead. No, I'm gonna do it, man. You get your ass blown away, it's down to the two of us again. We need you, Russ. You're the strongest one here. Look, I got a family. I won't see him again. I got a fiance. Ike here's got a nine-year-old daughter. You think we don't want to be out of here as much as you? I ain't gonna die here, man. I ain't gonna waste away like the two of you. Don't leave me alone here, right? What am I 
I supposed to do? He's going with or without me. At least with me, it's a hundred to one shot. Without me, it's suicide. I'm sorry. Just do me a favor. Don't tell me when you're gonna do it. They'll get it out of me, I... Say a prayer for us. Mày, mày trốn đi đâu rồi? Tụi nó đi đâu nào? Tôi không biết. Tao hỏi lại. Mấy thằng bạn mày trốn đi đâu? Đi đâu nào? Tôi không biết. Rồi. Mày không nói tao bán. Nói nào. That's a little bull, Russ. Remember what I said? They're going to try to turn us against each other. Now, come on, man. Here you speak Vietnamese now. Congratulations. I can Russ and I have been separated and we want to know why. One of you is going to be released. What the hell does he mean by progressive? You gotta learn a damn language. What kind of woman be left behind? Russ, I don't even know if he means to yeah, you can play along with March. All I know is what I heard, Russ. Do whatever I have to do to get out of here. That's not what this is about. Just give me your hand. What? Just give me your hand. Bobby. I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know if they're going to release Bobby or not. But one of us has got to make it out of here. We can't all die and get buried in the jungle or our families will never know what happened to us. So let's make a solemn promise to each other right now that no matter what, one of us is going to make it back. Russ? All right. Bye. Hey, 
Amen. 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 And if we all make it back, well, we'll just have one hell of a reunion. How'd that be? <laughs> policy of the NLF to release those American criminals who have repented their crimes against the Vietnamese people. In honor of his status as the prisoner who has demonstrated the proper attitude, he will now occupy a place apart from other criminals of war until we decide it's time for him to start his journey home. thank the National Liberation Front for their kindness and generosity in releasing me. I repent my crimes against the Vietnamese people. I oppose America's imperialistic war against this beleaguered nation. I promise never to take up arms against Vietnam again. I promise to tell the American people about the humane treatment that I have received here. The Vietnamese struggle is the only just struggle in this war. I hope that the other Americans here will see the truth that I, as I have, so that they too can be sent home. had a very bad accident last night. When we found him this morning, he seemed to have fallen from his hammock and broken a rib. He must have punctured a lung. There was nothing we could do to save him. make me very unhappy, Bobby. You're being very unprogressive with your attitudes here. As long as you persist on your belief concerning Ike's accident, you'll never be sent home. Where's Russ? You were a very bad influence on him. He's been moved. survived out of our unit. All the other things were wounded. They were all shot in the head. Come on, Knight! Get up! This is no talking. Keep moving. Another American taught me. You gotta learn to survive. They promised me release and then changed their minds. I'm only wearing these clothes because they took mine because either that or go naked. Oh, food. Oh, my What's Ho said about me, huh? I didn't want to believe it, you know. Go. 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 Go.
I want you men to carry this man's equipment. He's got malaria. Propaganda pig, huh? I said you wouldn't be here, you know that. Yeah, I know. Some one of the Marines, he said he saw you carrying a gun, no. The car got sick, Russ. They dismantled it first. Just want you to know what they're saying. You are a very unprogressive individual, Mr. Williams. You repeatedly refer to the South Vietnamese under U.S. domination as Republican fighters. They're puppets, you understand? What are they, Mr. Williams? They are Republican fighters. Puppet! They're puppets! You're trying to sabotage my class, Mr. Williams. I think you find that your fellow prisoners do not share your sentiments. Who agrees with Mr. Williams here? Who's willing to share his mistake? Who believes that the men we're referring to are puppets? Mr. Williams? Very good. You admit your error, and now you must be criticized. You. You agree that Mr. Williams should be criticized? Yes. Don't criticize him. Mr. Williams. You're referring to the puppet troops as Republican fighters is not a true representation of their position. They are working for the American government and American capitalists. That was not good enough. Can you do better? You, you've got blood on your hands, Williams. You're a cruel and brutal agent of Yankee imperialism. You. You're too much of a gun ho soldier, Williams. You're the kind that comes over here to rape women and children. These are not very heartfelt criticisms. We can stay here all day if we have to. Bobby, what do you have to say? You think you can criticize harshly enough?
The money you got in the army, Williams, was blood money for crimes you committed against the Vietnamese people. You can do better than that. Your beliefs are wrong, Williams, and I spit on you and what you stand for. Some supper. What? Man, that's the camp commander's prize chicken. Now think a weasel got it. You want it or not? All right, man. Hey, what I said in class, I just did it to stop all. If you don't say what they want you to say, it just makes things worse. You know that. Eat it all. Russ, save the two drumsticks. too much longer. Garwood is an example for all of you. He speaks our language and he has become very progressive. You too can be like him. He has been re-educated and he'll be sent home soon. Is that not true, Bobby? Bobby is our friend. You must obey him. He's to be referred to as Ang Do, which means fighter. If any disrespect should be shown him, we will deal with that the same way we would deal with just showing disrespect to any of our guards. I want to talk to them. That cannot be allowed. Why not? I can act as interpreter when you're not here. It's our decision, not yours. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Well, simply telling them the truth. You mean it's not true that you're progressive? If I uh, let you talk to them, would you report to me all conversations you have? I wish I could believe you, Bobby.
Top Williams, right? Mr. Dow. Don't call me that. How's your arm? Oh, not too good. I'll see what I can do. Where are you from? Are you married? The Hero One Series? St. Louis. Look, they're letting me talk to you guys so I can tell you if you obey the rules and work hard, you'll be released. But don't believe them. If you want to get out of here, you got to work for yourselves, not them. You got to learn the language. Make them think you're cooperating. Obey the rules, or they'll punish you. Don't try to escape, or they'll kill you. I'm good at it. I just do it for food. I don't understand the damn language. Look around you, man. We need medicine. Just tell me what you need. Penicillin, quinine, uh, syringes, sterile scalpels. They won't give you those things. They're in too short supply. Only medicine available here is in the jungle. Roots, herbs. Look, I'm a doctor. I don't practice any of their primitive medicine. They don't really think of it as primitive. Translate! Tell them what I need. Ông ta muốn phụ sinh thuộc sổ quét. Ông nhìn mau và giáo mô các cô chồng. Nó không phải là bác sĩ ở đây. Nó được không được hành nghề hay tự gọi mình là bác sĩ ở đây. Nó chỉ là thằng tù binh. He says you're not a doctor here. You're not permitted to practice medicine or call yourself a doctor here. What'd you just tell him? What you said. Except I didn't call it primitive medicine. They told us you crossed over, man. What's your status here, mister? I'm a prisoner. Same as you. Well, it sure looks like they treat you a hell of a lot better than they do us. I take care of myself. I eat plants, I eat frogs, I eat rats. If you men were to eat some of those things... We'd be dead. Animals eat those things, not us. The VC, they eat those things. You know what that makes you then, right? giết con mèo. Who killed the cat? Nếu chúng mày không nói ra, tất cả sẽ bị trừng phạt. If you don't tell us who killed it, everyone is going to be punished. Đứa nào giết con mèo chịu nhận tội, đứa đó sẽ có cơ hội chuộc tội. If the person who killed the cat will confess, he will be given the opportunity to repent. If you don't confess, severe punishment will be suffered by all. Now we go now. Who killed the cat? I did. Everyone, back in your holes. Get it, get it. No! You call yourselves Americans? How could you let Russ take the blame? How long did it take you to understand they wouldn't have done anything if you just stuck together? Russ, 
dies because of this. You threatening us, Garwood? No, I'm not threatening. I'm promising. Listen, man, we need some eggs. You think you could do that for us? Just a couple eggs, man. That's all we need. Can you steal us a couple of eggs? Hey, come on, man. You can't leave us alone in here. Steal them yourself. Bobby. Tôi biết việc anh ăn cắp. Chúng tôi biết anh đang nói dối và gian lận. We know you're stealing. Nếu anh chịu nhận tội, we know you're lying and you're deceiving. Hồ sẽ cứu xét việc phạt anh. Anh ăn cắp thuốc men phải không? If you will confess to these crimes, anh giết con gà đá của tôi phải we không? We will determine your punishment. Những tội này rất nặng. Took medicine, yes. Nếu là binh sĩ của tôi, kill my prize hand. These crimes are very serious. I know I'm your way. Who told us these things? The people you call your friends. I'm sorry, you're mistaken. They were never my friends. I guess you guys finally got your pound of flesh. It wasn't us, Bobby. Hello, Bobby. Is there anything you want to tell me? You must realize by now how much they hated you. Why did you help them at all? I don't understand why you Americans look on us as a barbaric people. If one of our guards was accused of one of those crimes, it would be treason. You got a whole list and you're still alive. Just do what you're gonna do. I'm sorry, Bobby. I had to so for you. 
Mr. Ho. Do you remember the promise you made to me? That I would see my family again. Now you're going to execute me. I want you to think about that. very fortunate to survive the bombing. You were the only one, yes? Here in North Vietnam, you cannot fool us as you did in the South. We know who you are, we know what you did before you were captured. I was a driver. You were an operative in the CIA. You were trained in intelligence. How else do you expect us to believe you speak our language without an accent? McGaughy! What is so funny? I thought I was just an Indiana farm boy. Now I've become the great American spy, huh? between the Vietnamese government and the American government. This can only happen when the relations between the two governments are normalized. You should keep in mind that you're still alive and that the Vietnamese government has been very kind to you. We've given you clothing and food, which are things of need to the Vietnamese citizens. I want to be released. That's not your decision. We will let you know when and if, and we will determine it. Get out! Xin lời, anh phải chờ. Còn mà lăn chút nữa. Ta chỉ cần 5 phút thôi. Đem xe anh ơi, tao lo mà lên. Dạ con ngay. Tao Hà Nội, với rất nhiều đại biểu từ Liên Xô, Cuba và Âu Châu. Hà Nội vui lắm. Mình ra Hà Nội mình chơi đi, nhiều đồ đẹp. Mình ăn rồi mình làm mệt nó nhà nó ngủ cái sạn. I'm glad you have resigned yourself to being here. The war is long over. You made yourself useful repairing trucks America left behind. But you are alone. I find that very sad. 
Would you like to join the French Legion House? They chose to stay here 20 years ago. Their life is very good. They're allowed to marry. They have children. So, it seems your life has gotten better for you, huh? One of the drivers felt sorry for me. <laughs> the Vietnamese are human, too. Even though some say we aren't. They've been towing vehicles into camp. Ones that uh, break down on the road, wouldn't it be simpler if a mechanic were taken to them? No. I'm under strict orders. You cannot leave this camp. Truck loaded with vegetable cannot be moved. If not fixed, the vegetable rot. Who gave us permission to leave? either. You know Hanoi, huh? Yes. There are many Russians there? Oh, yes. Europeans too, huh? Yes. What do they say? The Europeans. What hotels do they stay in? The Victory Hotel. Europeans only. place, huh? Yes. It's very different. European only. They have the best bath, liquors, foreign goods. Why shouldn't you have that too, huh? We must tie our belt to help rebuild the country. I can make it easier for you, you know. Your opinion? No? No. I would be shot for a reason.
kill your Vietnamese. Yes? I'd like a, uh, one carton of American cigarettes, please. Some Russian vodka and, uh, rock candy. Do you have hard rock candy? Tôi muốn đi vào Hà Nội Phải có giấy phép mới đi được Lâm sẽ chết mấy vậy Lâm Tôi cần thuốc lá mỹ Mà nhiều chuyện quá vậy Sao mày quăng I heard on the radio there's a big uh, foreign delegation coming to Hanoi. They'll restock the hotel. We could get more. No. Too dangerous now. I haven't been feeling very well lately, you know. Might have another malaria attack. Hallucinate. Who knows what I'll say to the doctors, huh? We haven't seen you in a while. Yes, I've been away on business. I'll have the usual. The man see you in Washington next week. Oui. Yeah. Au revoir. Bon. Au revoir. smoke a pipe. to me? No. They will if I don't get back out there.
many questions in the following days. We know you have trouble understanding English. We will help you with your answers. You must answer the questions correctly. Is your name Robert R. Garwood? Yes. The government of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam has hosted Mr. Robert R. Garwood for 13 and a half years. Until this time, Mr. Garwood has remained in Vietnam as a matter of conscience and was free to go whenever he desired. In keeping with his request to return to the U.S. to rejoin his family, we present him now to the representative of the International Red Cross. Mr. Garwood will be happy to answer your questions. I wish to lodge an official protest. This press conference is not in keeping with the customary procedures in this matter. Mr. Garwood will be handed over to you at the airport tomorrow morning. There are allegations by POWs in America that you carried a weapon. Can you confirm or deny these reports? I deny it. You were offered to be repatriated in 1967. Is that true? Yes. Why did you decide at that time not to go back to the U.S.? It's my own conscience. Then again in 73, why did you refuse to go back? I wasn't asked, and I didn't ask anyone. Did you agree to join the VC at any time? No. I didn't join anyone. Not in the United States Marine Corps. And you never carried a weapon in the service of the Vietnamese Army? No. Have you been in Hanoi ever since 70? Yes. Can we come home with you now to your living quarters here? Uh, a Vietnamese going away party has been arranged. I want to spend my last evening here with my friends. I did not betrayed the United States, but I betrayed the involvement of the United States in Vietnam. I don't know if you consider me a peace fighter or not, but I was not in collaboration with the Vietnamese. I was in collaboration with the people of the United States against the involvement of the United States government in Vietnam. Who did you pass the note to? I don't know his name. Did your driver help you with that? No. How did you know what hotel to go to? Who told you? Let's talk. Just look. You are lying. We know the answers.
Ahora son. life ahead of her. And you extinguished it! You will return to the United States now, but not under the conditions you expect. You think you alone can outsmart the Vietnamese government? But you will find you're not as smart as you think you are. It would have been better for you if you had been shot along with her. taken by us on Air France to Bangkok, where you will be turned over to the U.S. authorities. I please ask you to refrain from saying anything until you arrive there. Do you have your passport? No, me the pa. Have you had a pleasant stay in Vietnam? Here, a souvenir book for you. Please, return soon. Monsieur Gowood, I am the captain. It's a pleasure to have you on board. When did you last sleep? About 72 hours. Why? I'm just afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? Afraid that I'm dreaming. You are free now. You're out of Vietnamese airspace. They can't hurt you anymore. P.F.C. Robert R. Garwood? Yes, sir. Private Garwood, it is my duty to inform you you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him represent you while being questioned. Do you understand each of these rights I have just explained to you? Private Garwood, I'm going to sign to you as your military counsel. You may not understand these instructions, but please do not talk to anyone or answer anyone's questions. Robert Garwood, this is a photo album prepared for you by your family. It shows how they look then and now. I don't know how to tell you this, Private, but during your time in captivity, your mother, your grandmother, your uncle Bud, and your niece Tammy passed away.
that Private First Class Robert R. Garwood did on several occasions approach the perimeter of front lines near American fire support bases and speak through a bullhorn requesting United States combat forces to throw down their weapons and refuse to fight. That he did on or about 28 September 1965 in time of war without authority and with intent to remain away therefrom permanently absent himself from his unit. That he did knowingly communicate and hold intercourse with the enemy by wearing the uniform of the enemy, carrying arms and accepting a position in the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. And that he did act as an interpreter and informer and interrogator of prisoners of war an indoctrinator and a guard. That he did maltreat private first class David N. Harker by striking him in the ribs with his hands without justifiable cause. That he did maltreat first sergeant Richard F. Williams by saying to him, I spit on you and all people like you disgust me, or words to that effect without justifiable cause. We're going to move to dismiss all charges on the grounds that you're the only returning POW to be prosecuted for misconduct during captivity. There are others who allegedly made recordings, signed statements. The court, however, may feel that any decision not to prosecute those POWs in 73 does not necessarily bar prosecuting you today. We are, uh, we're not going to put you on the stand, Bob. Your defense hinges on the fact that, as a result of torture and isolation, you have developed something called an atypical dissociative disorder, which has now resolved itself into something else called post-traumatic stress syndrome. We're claiming in your defense, Bob, that you're mentally ill. The good news is that they have decided that if they find you guilty, they will not shoot you. The worst you can get is life in prison. So what else is no? The United States versus private first class Robert R. Garwood. At no time in any of the camps did the accused live with us. He lived with the interpreter. The accused wore a uniform like the NVA. He told us he had crossed over, that they said they would release him or be liberated. The first time I saw the accused was when he was leading McMillan and Davis into the camp. I remember on that occasion seeing the accused with an AK-47. I never saw him point a rifle at any American POWs. I never saw him with any live ammunition that I know of. The accused had a watch and a little bag that he carried tobacco in. The accused wore a red and gold button, a token of Ho Chi Minh on his khaki shirt. When Ho Chi Minh died, the accused, along with the other camp guards and cadre, wore some badge of mourning. Ho said the accused was an officer of the front. He carried a weapon and went with the prisoners on forays outside the camp to get food. I saw him guarding American prisoners. He worked with the guards and helped them carry wood and supplies. The guards treated him like one of them. They welcomed him with hugs and embraces. I was interrogated by the accused on several occasions. I stood at attention until he said that I could sit down and he started asking me questions. He explained to me the rules of the camp and told me that if I worked hard, there was a possible chance of my early release. During the political course, Hull told the prisoners that Williams was to be harshly criticized. The accused criticized him more savagely than the others. One of the things I remember him saying was, Williams, I spit on you. The interpreter questioned us about who killed the cat. Russ said he did it. They pulled him out and started beating him. The accused said, you all are supposed to be Americans. Why do you let Russ take all the blame? He passed by me, hit me on my right side with the back of his hand. Made a statement to the effect that uh, you'll have to pay for what happened to Russ. If I'm asked whether I believe the accused or if I believe the prisoners of war, I'd have to say in terms of accuracy that I believe the prisoners of war. In my opinion, the accused gives an honest but inaccurate account of certain aspects of what happened to him because of the unconscious process of rationalization and his uh, being unable to recall events that were very distressing. I think his personality style made him very susceptible to the efforts of his VC captors. He was very useful. He was very passive 
He was easily influenced by powerful others. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a condition that results from the mind having been overwhelmed by some experience. You don't expect a person who's been run over by a truck to get up and walk away. Emotionally, Bob had been run over by a truck, and the truck backed up a few times. He was exposed to torture and isolation. None of the prisoners of war returning from Vietnam who had been exposed to these stresses did not comply with whatever was requested. Everyone there had, in some form or another, been involved with the captors. Even those who've been accepted as heroes did not live up to their own expectations. No one should have expected them to. Bob is a person who needs human support and help. He says that, in a sense, he's being tortured now, that he's a pawn. I think that's a, a good summary of what's been happening to this man for far too long. On the following charges, Article 82, the Private First Class Garwood did speak through a bullhorn requesting U.S. combat forces to throw down their weapons and refuse to fight. On Article 85, that he did without authority absent himself from his unit. Article 105, Spec 2, that he did maltreat First Sergeant Richard F. Williams by saying to him, I spit on you, or words to that effect. I find the evidence insufficient to sustain a verdict of guilty. On the two remaining charges, have the panel members reached a verdict? Yes, sir. On Article 104, that Private Garwood did knowingly communicate and hold intercourse with the enemy, do you find him guilty or not guilty? Guilty. On Article 105, Spec 1, that he did maltreat Private First Class David N. Harker by striking him in the ribs with his hands, do you find him guilty or not guilty? Not guilty of maltreatment. Guilty of the lesser charge of simple assault. Private First Class Garwood, this court, having found you guilty on a charge of simple assault on a fellow prisoner and of communicating and holding verbal intercourse with the enemy, you are hereby reduced to the lowest grade possible and dishonorably discharged from the United States Marine Corps, forfeiting all pay and benefits. It doesn't matter what you think of me or my actions. I lost 14 years of my life. But I made a promise to a couple of friends of mine over there that I would return, and I did. They weren't so lucky. I believe that I am not the last American to be released from Vietnam. Yeah. I believe that there are others. Yeah. And I hope that someday they will be brought home. If we all make it back, why well, don't we just have one hell of a reunion? How'd that be? <laughs> I'm home, Mike. I'm home, Russ. I'm home.